welcome to this edition of Canola TV, featuring the latest information on producing and marketing winter canola in the Southern Plains. Canola TV, a service of PCOM, Producers Cooperative Oil Mill. Howdy neighbors, Ron Hayes with you today with another edition of Canola TV. This is part two of our three-part series with Dr. Tom Pieper of Oklahoma State University, who's been instrumental in helping winter canola get uh, from the theoretical stage to out in the field to over 100,000 acres planted this last fall. Dr. Pieper, we've uh, had several years of growing uh, canola now under our belt. He offers uh, some of the lessons he believes that we've learned along the way. I think some of the most important things, uh, we have better genetics, we have the management systems pretty well worked out. We've all learned a lot about how to harvest canola most efficiently. And, and the delivery points are, have been so important to getting a network of delivery points set up around the state and buyers, and now we have multiple buyers in the state for canola. So there, uh, we, we've overcome a lot of those problems of bringing in a completely new industry from scratch. It's really encouraging to look around at this meeting and see so many new faces here. Mm -hmm. uh, there are farmers here that have been growing canola for a while, and there are a lot of them, it looks like to me, that they're just curious of what, <laughs> what's going on. Mm -hmm. They were talking yesterday, uh, prices uh, in a $13 a bushel range. So that, that makes $7 wheat still look pretty cheap to me. Yeah. You know, when, when, we, when we were looking at these alternatives, why did you settle on canola? Well, it's a winter crop. It's a drought hardy or a dry land hardy winter crop. And we needed a winter crop. Uh, our best water use efficiency in Oklahoma is in the winter. Sometimes, yes, we can get by with summer crops on bottom land and irrigated land, but for most of our wheat, wheat belt, we need a winter crop. Uh, the other thing is, it's a broadleaf crop, and so we had a good options outside of glyphosate. We can use other herbicides to kill all of those grass weeds out of canola. Uh, it's an oil seed crop, so it's not competing with wheat and corn in the, in the grain market. It's competing with soybeans in the oil market. Plus, there was a tremendous demand for it. We found out that, uh, that the United States was importing over a million acres of production from Canada every year, and we thought, well, heck, we ought to be growing that ourselves instead of growing wheat and then wondering how in the world we're going to get somebody to buy it. So. The other, of course, it, it works good with the farmers, the wheat farmers' equipment. Mm -hmm. That was the next thing, and uh, it, it just it seemed to fit. We didn't need much of anything special to get started. Uh, well, we thought we were a lot farther ahead when we started than we were. <laughs> We've learned a heck of a lot. Uh, the growers have learned a lot, and they've taught us a lot. Mm -hmm. We have a lot better genetics than we did, more winter tolerance, uh, varieties that hug the ground better. They're more tolerant to uh, wheat herbicides, carryover. They're low pH tolerant. Uh, all of the things that are needed to fit into Oklahoma are, are coming along. I'm kind of excited about the hybrid canolas that are coming along too because we're just getting into the hybrid canolas in Oklahoma. Uh, hybrid wheat appears to be a long ways away. We've never had any success with hybrid wheat. We've never been able to really get our wheat yields up. We keep kicking around that old 30 bushels an acre statewide average and we just don't make any progress and that's just not economically feasible anymore. So I think We'll still encourage the growers to start a little smaller, just take one field at a time, keep an eye on it, learn as they go, and, and just about all of them now. Once they, once they get their feet wet, they grow more of it the second year. When we first started, we had some bad experiences. Yeah. Uh, we were all on a steep learning curve. I don't know, I don't know what else I would say other than as we continue to have tours and programs throughout the springtime 
and it's the Canola Conference this summer, uh, we would sure encourage the guys to come. The wheat growers need to get there. A lot of them will say, well, I graze mine. And I'm a cattle man, and they've got their $150 Stetson on a permanent ring around their head. Hey, that's okay. But most of them do not graze 100% of their wheat. They always have some of those fields that are not handy or convenient or not fenced or no water, or they don't get it planted on time. Uh, that's a place to try some canola. See if they wouldn't be a little happier making some money while they're out there riding that tractor. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Peeper. Next time on Canola TV, we look at where we may be headed with winter canola in Oklahoma and the surrounding states. For PCOM, I'm Ron Hayes on Canola TV, a service of OklahomaFarmReport.com.